Hi, everyone. Good morning. This is Petra, and this is Jigsaw Parenting. I have with me Stephen Bax from Miami and Cece Ventura from the Netherlands. And you know what, folks? We've got another hot topic today: kids and drugs. It's it's kind of like you can't get away from it. It, it. It's not to say your kids are gonna do drugs, but you know it's gonna come up. So, growing up, I guess in growing up in Miami, in the time I was growing up, um, cocaine was big. Even though we may not have even realized the magnitude of what was going on in, in Miami with cocaine, that was really big. And then. Um, in high school, kids started to maybe, you hear a little bit about weed um, back then. Nowadays, weed just seems to be just a normal thing. Like, it's it's kind of like, hey, I'm eating. Oh, hey, I'm smoking weed. It's just, it goes with, with things now. I don't know. But what do you do? Like, do your kids even come to you and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, do you think it'll be okay if I try this? Or do they do it and then you just kind of find out about it? I, I you know, I've got a I've got a kid in first year in college. And as we all know, when kids go to college, they're doing everything. They're definitely drinking, right? But they're doing other stuff too. You just like, do you know what they're doing? Do you want to know what they're doing? Um, is it one of those don't ask, don't tell policies from back in the day with the military? <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, but I, I I mean I've always tried to talk to my kids, my my children about you don't know how you're gonna be with a certain drug. So don't even try it because you don't know. So, and people will say, Oh no, I can control myself, I won't get hooked on it. Uh, it's you don't know what's gonna happen. So I personally try and tell them. Try and stay away from the, the drugs, you know, like the pills, the powders, and those types of things. Um, I, I pretty much know they're going to drink. Um, heck, I drink. I've always drunk. Not to say I was drunk, but, you know, that, that's, a, that's a conversation for another time, right? <laughs> you guys, like, what is happening in your house with, with, with the kids and, and drugs? Well, my oldest is on spring break, or he's just ending spring break, um, okay. and it's his he's his freshman year too in college, and he's living at home, and so I have a little bit better view of it. And knowing my years in college, I was in a fraternity house, and I lived in the dorms and the fraternity house, mm -hmm. so you know I had some good times. Now for me, and in college, it was just drinking. Mm -hmm. I did grow up in Miami when the cocaine was everywhere. In fact, one of the uh, senior high school buses that went up for grad night at Disney, which is where they used to do it, was known as the snowmobile. Dang. It was with cocaine on it. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it was everywhere. It, it really was everywhere. I lost friends to it, uh, either in prison wow. or in uh, rehab or just in the grave. Um, so, it, it, you know, there, it was definitely around. It was everywhere. And if you wanted it, you could have it. You could probably still find it now because it's still down here. Mm -hmm. uh, Miami was built on it. It really yeah. was. It was built on, on cocaine. And they, we've got far more banks than we need down here, but somebody's got to launder the money. <laughs> yes. I'm laughing. Yeah. But, it's not but that's the truth. It's the truth. It yeah. Good. But uh, uh, anyway, we um, he had a spring break, and he said, Dad, uh, uh, can can we get an Airbnb uh, down in, uh, by the beach? I said, uh, well, you got to be a certain age. We ended up letting him do it. Because we're going to do it regardless. Okay. Uh, and then he said, Dad, can I bring a bottle of something? You're not driving. No. He says, in fact, Angel's picking me up. His friend's Angel. And he is, he's not an angel, but, you know, he's a good kid. <laughs> and uh, uh, I said, okay, I don't want anybody driving. And, right. and so they took an Uber to the beach. I gave him a bottle of vodka. Uh, and uh, they were very good. They had a good, he came home the next day. Had a raging headache. I said, "You see, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know." But that—that's part of the learning that's process. Mm -hmm. they, they're either, you know, they, they can drink where you know about it, or they can drink where you don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as marijuana goes, we go to New York a lot, and now in New York, you walk down the streets, you smell it everywhere. You don't smell cigarettes at all, but marijuana is 
everywhere. Everywhere. It's legal, r- relatively legal now. And uh, they have they have uh, CBD trucks and CBD shops yes. everywhere. And you know you, you get tired of the smell. It's so it's there's so much of it around. Um, I'm I'm guessing my son has tried it. Uh, he won't say directly. He just kind of mm-hmm. avoids it, which tells me yeah he's tried it. Right. Um, right. But he's also very much into going to the gym all the time. So the idea of doing anything hard. He's like, yeah. You don't think it's gonna really happen? No, you know? I don't. He's at the gym every day with his buddies, and you know, he takes the protein uh, shakes and mm-hmm. and uh, everything he can to get uh, fit. So I don't see that happening. No, no. Yeah. Uh, and, and and I look at my age, you know, when I was growing up, though, the, the, my main thing was alcohol. Um, Mine was alcohol, yeah. definitely, yeah. and it still is. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'll have a scotch and a cigar once in a while. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, most of the time, I stay home, and and that's, you know, I, drinking alone is that a bad thing? I don't know, but uh, you know, I I do it at home, so I don't drive anywhere. Listen, listen. There's nothing wrong with drinking alone. I yeah. can get alone with my thoughts. <laughs> I sit out in my backyard, and I put up my little video, and I watch Netflix or that's HBO it. or whatever, and just kick back and relax. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, for Lent, I gave up dating, so <laughs> I'm gonna stay home. It's just Listen, it's, 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, you know what? The last couple of dates have been so ooh, uh I don't want to do it for a little while now. I'm, right, I'm just right. Give it a break. I'm over, I'm over it. Give it a break. Yeah. So what about you, sissy? What what what's happened with you and, and the kids and drugs? And um, alcohol? Well, you know, we're living here, they are much open about drugs. Uh, I mean yeah. oh that's uh, right. Yeah, I mean Amsterdam. It's it's yes. like a, a kind of the description of New York. The coffee shop isn't really the coffee shop. It's where you go and buy your weed. Right. <laughs> you can ask for coffee, but they'll look at you a little weird. But so right. <clears throat> I, I remember growing up um, myself. We were very brought up very against drugs. I mean, my dad smoked normal cigarettes, and and that's about it. And and. Alcohol was the main thing. People got drunk and that was it. But coming to live here, or you, you really get up close and personal with drugs in your face. You, you get to deal with it with people on the street smoking it like it's nothing special. Mm-hmm. So it was very hard for me to find a middle way in trying to teach my daughters about, well, it's, it's still drugs. It's kind of normal here. People right. smoke it, me, it under the mom of it's being me- medicinal that it's okay, it's for pain relief, but otherwise the most people that smoke it is just for smoking it to have a good feeling about it. Right. Feeling good, feeling relaxed. Right. Yeah, getting high. Um, it's well, very my, normal. And, and my students talk about it, that it's, that it's actually better to smoke out than it is to drink alcohol for your body. Yeah, and 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 that's, that's that. the main thing here oh, too. Because um, I'm getting into conversation because my daughter smokes weed. I know about it. We're very open about it. Mm-hmm. I never thought in my whole life, getting the upbringing I did, that I would ever walk into a, a coffee shop and buy weed for my dr- daughter, and, which I've done, which I've told her, this will show up in my bank account. And I don't want them to know I'm buying this because it's for you. Right. And the people will ask me, what do you want? And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Give me that one. <laughs> so I've been in situations where I never thought I would have ever be into, but I it's kind of been normalized because I know I know what she's getting into. And, and we've had conversations, like you just mentioned, Stephen, that um, we've gotten into that alcohol is easier to get. It's worse being addicted to alcohol because you can just go into any supermarket and buy it. Mm-hmm. And when drugs, you got to... You got to show your ID. It's going to cost you more. It's, you got to go through much more trouble than alcohol. Right. So we've got a much larger alcohol alcohol problem here in Holland than we do actually with people using drugs because of it being so relatively easy to get. Yeah. So the drug thing, it's, it's a conversation we do have, but we do have it about weed, but things go, uh, let's say, about uh, pills or cocaine mm-hmm. or speed or MDNA or uh, other big stuff. That, that's a no-no. I'm like, uh, right. you can tell me about it, 
and ask me what I think about it, but I'm going to say no. I don't want you doing it. And if it's because she's 21 now, yep. so if she, she's going to do it anyway, I'll tell her, well, it, I'm not okay with it. So I'm, I hope you don't get sick or anything because you're going to hear about it from me. And right. even with, when she drinks and she comes back home and she'll wake up walking a bit with a hangover. And I'm like, oh, I hope you had a good time. And right. He, so, wait, wait, listen, the mom stuff. listen, listen, are you, are, are you that parent where you're like, oh, I hope you had a good time. That's okay. You still have some stuff to do around this house. So you better get up. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll go and clap my hand. Yeah, come on. Well, <laughs> my, right? my, son, my son, he's never admitted to smoking, but he, but he did say he went to Trippy Red, which is a rapper down here, uh, an entertainer. Okay. And he said, he said he did get a, just a contact high being in the concert there, uh, you know. And growing up in the uh, 80s, going to, to see Yes in Boston and Quiet Riot and all these mm -hmm. different groups at the old Hollywood Sportatorium down here. Um, yeah, it, the smoke was everywhere. You breathed yeah. it in regardless uh, of whether you smoked it or not. Um, and, you know, I don't have a big issue with the smoke. I, I just, I get tired of the smell. My neighbor smokes all the time. I'm, I'm fine with it, you know. And I know a lot of people that they, they don't drink at all, but they'll smoke. Yeah, and you know that that's just the, the, that's the, their poison of choice, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I don't. I don't care. As long. My boss used to tell me before I was a teacher, I worked at an auto parts store. He said, uh, "I don't care what you do. I'm not doing drug testing here. As long as you show up for work and you do your job, I don't care." Right. And they would take us out on our birthday, and they take it take us out drinking. And I remember waking up in his driveway and and in, in my car, I wasn't allowed to drive anywhere. But that morning, I had to go to work in the same clothes I wore the day the mm -hmm. day before. The day before. Oh, listen, listen! I've done that. I, you yeah. know, when you, I have done that back in my heyday. Oh yeah. Out and you've partied till the wee hours, and you're like, yep. there was no shower that was taken before you show nope. up to work. You better make sure you brush your teeth, use that mouthwash, did something to the hair, the cologne, or whatever. Like you yeah. had some sense. Yeah. You know? Because especially back then, you smelled like alcohol, cigarettes, and cologne. Yeah. Because whatever club you were in, that's what it was, you know? Right, right. Yeah. But you know yeah. what? I think, I also think that, if I, and I could be biased, granted, because it's our generation, but I feel like we still knew we had to show up. We still need, knew yeah. we had to do things, and we sucked it up, did whatever we had to do, so we did show up like we were supposed to at least to look like we had some sense right. and get the job done. I don't know that that this generation now gets <laughs> nuts and knows well, how to do that and, and thinks yeah. that it's important enough to still show up for it. You know, if right. you, somebody's depending on you. So I don't care what you did the night before or rather two hours before you got here. You better show up and get the job done. Yeah. You still need well, I'm of two minds of that. I mean, because, you know, we work ourselves to death here. And if we want to take a day off because we partied the night before, why not? Right. Uh, do I do that? No, I don't, especially at my age, you know. Yeah. But, you know, South Beach is having a, uh, you know, Miami Beach is fighting the clubs because they wanted to close at 2. Judge said, no, they could stay up till five, open till 5 a.m. And, you know, growing up, the clubs were 4 or 5 a.m. So mm -hmm. you were out. When you were out all night, you were out all night until the club mm -hmm. shut down. Yeah, yeah. up a little bit went to work. Listen, I yeah. remember going out partying and being in Miami, right, and coming back home or coming back wherever it was I was coming back to. And I, <laughs> this is at the time when, you know, the, the newspaper was still being printed on a regular yes. basis. And it's Sunday morning, and the Miami Hero trucks were out <laughs> to stock up the newspaper mm -hmm. on the side of the road where people were selling them. I'm seeing them, like you know, like I'm, you know, I've been out too long. Okay, yep. I meet the newspaper people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here they have a saying: if you're a big girl at night, you should be a big girl during the day too. I so like you gotta that. show up. And no one will tell you anything about your clothes, about your hair, about how you smell. If you show up, just and don't don't be nagging either. Oh, I've got a headache. Oh, it's no, don't want to hear it. Now you got to work too. That's right. Well, well, they always say that uh, and, and this is sexist. It is, but when the woman's walking home in the dress she wore the night before, the, 
the walk of shame, they call it. Really? Really? Yeah. That's that's what they call it. When a woman comes home and she's wearing that same little black dress and her heels, it's not cute anymore. It's the walk of shame. Well, I, I'll tell you. I just go, anyone that looks at me, I'll just say, it's laundry day. I yeah. still look good. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> Well, I know for me, we've always tried to talk to the kids about alcohol mm -hmm. and, you know, everything that's important with that. Look hey, at this. Charlie. <laughs> Look at this one showing up. Uh huh. Oh, my so God. We've she's all grown up. To talk to them about um, alcohol and because obviously we know at some point they're going to drink. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's been about not mixing drinks, at least, you know, yeah. where you're. You, you got the tequila, you got the beer vodka. before liquor, never be sicker. Liquor before Say beer, it again? Never, beer before liquor, never be sicker. Liquor before beer, never fear. Oh gosh, no. okay, I, I don't know that one. <laughs> okay. We're just trying, to, just trying to teach them about stuff, mm. not mixing. You know, if you're gonna stay with the light, you stay with the light. Um, stay with some of that the, stuff sneaks up on you. Say it again. Some of it will sneak up on you, too. It will. You know, and that's the other thing. The conversation is about going places. Of course, you are. You don't have somebody else bring you a drink because you don't no. know what could be in it. If you've got to leave the drink to go to the bathroom or leave it for whatever reason, then you leave it. You don't go back to it. No. Um, no. You know, you my got grandfather. who you party with. You Everybody yeah. that you think is your friend is not your friend. And, and we no. always try to talk to them about that. So... Because we don't want them to end up in any like life or death no. or any really crazy no. thing. And going out with the group, stay with your group. If you're going out yeah. with your girlfriend, stay with them. Don't go with some guy just because. No. Right. If we came mm -hmm. together, we're leaving together. Right. Oh, right. I, I have a grandfather whom I never met. And uh, after five wives, my grandmother being oh. the first one. Okay. He died of alcoholism at 41. Oh, gosh. Oh, so, you know, and I explained that to my children. I said, you know, we don't know if that's genetic, but, that's you know, cool. you, you need to keep an eye on it. Uh, I don't drink during the week, for one thing. I don't, not normally. I do once in a while. I'll go out with the guys on a Wednesday night because that's when they do that um, and have a beer. But uh, uh, by and large, I don't do it very often. Um, I Sometimes I like the ceremony of the drink. You're going to a nice bar that knows how to make a Manhattan or knows how to make an old fashioned or a real martini. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things I, I miss about New York. I mean, there's nobody does it like they do in New York. You go to New York and do a fancy bar and you order that and, and they'll smoke the glass and they'll use the right dark maraschino cherries for your old fashioned. And I like the ceremony of that and just sitting there and looking around at all the people in shirt right. and tie or you know, you know, dressed nice. And I almost like it more than the drink. Yeah, I like it more than the drink. And I took my brother, who's a, a beer guy, you know, beer and football only as we wear our sports jerseys today. Uh -huh. uh, right. <laughs> uh, I took him to a bar in New York called Campbell's Apartment. It's a very nice place. They won't let you in in blue jeans or anything like that. And we sit down and we order two drinks. And he goes, I'll get this one. I said, no, 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 you won't. And he still, that was about 10 years ago. He still starts talks about it. That was $36 for two drinks. You know, you still talk. <laughs> said, but it's yeah, the whole experience. You're paying for the experience sometime. Yeah, and that's an historic okay. site. And it's a place I always enjoy going to when it's open. And uh, unfortunately, the last few times I went uh, in August, October, and December. And not one of those times was it open mm -hmm. uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, so I look forward to going back there. Um, yeah. But there are places in New York like that, and, and it's more about the ceremony than it is about the drink. And well, and, and sometimes it's 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 really about the company and conversations. It is. It. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of times these fancy yeah. bars, I'll go alone. Mm -hmm. I'll just go alone and people watch. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, nurse yeah. my drink. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think I, I think as long as we continue to talk to them and and I, sissy yeah. I I definitely agree with you the, the, all the hard drugs like to me that I'm gonna always say no I'm gonna say no because these are chemical altering things and I'm just yeah. I'm not willing to play Russian roulette I don't want them playing Russian roulette with it you know well one more thing though mm -hmm. 
we talk, you know, setting an example. Do you ever have a drink with your son or daughter? You know? Okay, so mine are not of age yet to have drinks. No, well, Jordan, though, she's she's like she's she's a, a legal adult, right? Um, but so do you have wine? Like, we'll have wine with dinner sometimes. Okay, so else. if if I have a drink at the house here, I'm yeah. drinking something. I'll say, "Oh, do you want to taste it?" Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. But we, you know, now that she's been in college and she's come back home, have I had a drink and then offered her, "Do you want one?" and make her one? Yeah, I've done that. I don't have a problem. We're at home. She, I know she's not driving any place. Yep. Um, yeah. We haven't gone out to like a place and had any drinks together like that because one, she's still yeah. legal to yeah. do that, and I'm not going to violate any laws like that out in public. But I don't know, maybe at, you know, when she gets old enough, we might do something like yeah. that. That's yet to be seen. Okay? By that point, she's raised already. So you know, <laughs> you can be your friend now. Um, well, you know, and, and, and with um, we have what we call a burn supper, which is a Scottish tradition where you read poetry and sing songs, just eat Scottish food. And we do it on Zoom because of the pandemic. But we have people in Scotland, Minnesota, Washington, D.C. and here we're all on Zoom doing all this sort of thing. <clears throat> and while we're doing it, we're trying different scotches. There's a, an actual menu of scotches, single malt scotches that you go through of different regions of Scotland. And I have Ethan and Brian sit there. Brian will taste it, and Ethan will take some. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of fun to do that. But again, we're at home. We're, um, you're at home. And yeah. if you think about it, you're at home, and you're also introducing, like, tradition, the culture Absolutely. of the family along with it. So I think if you're at home, you know, because I, I, I'm going to tell you something. I think what happens is for college, if kids don't know about things or, you know, they haven't been exposed to a lot of things, they get to college and they go buck wild because it's like, yes. oh, oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. And those are the kids that do like the crazy stuff. Yep. Yes. They the never had a chance to. Those things. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I think it's a very interesting question you asked because I had it the other way around because my daughter smokes weed and okay. she has it at home. So there was a time because I used to smoke cigarettes for a very short time. But then she said, Mom, wouldn't you want to try your weed? Uh, have a smoke. And I was so tempted. I was, oh, I, I can do that. Right. And then when I was going into, and then I suddenly thought, because I'm into sports like your son, Stephen, yeah. I, I don't like feeling bad because I, I drank something or I smoked mm -hmm. something. So when I was going to take a smoke, and then I thought, no, why would I? No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to feel bad. I have to regret, oh, no, I'm, I'm old. I can't do it. And so I said, no, I made a responsible decision. Afterwards, I thought it was responsible because I still have an 11 year old. It's looking like, so what's mom gonna do? And I didn't even think about it at that time. No. I was like, ooh, I can do that. But just my own health being, I, I thought, no, well, I don't need that, I'm fine. But afterwards I thought, well, I'm still in the house with two girls. <laughs> Right. So and after young, there was a good, still a young, yeah. very impressionable girl. Yeah. So if mom yeah. decides to smoke with a twenty year, twenty one year old, well, what's to say it would become of her? It's, it has no limits. It's just too normal, man. No. So we had to have the discussion with the kids because when my wife was sick, she had to smoke some for the pain. Right. Okay. So, oh, uh, purposes. Okay. And her mother had arthritis, so they asked me to join them, and I had to talk, have to talk with the kids. And you want to talk about the most bizarre? <laughs> that you sit there with your mother-in-law, your wife. <laughs> and you know, I'm not. I, I I've never been big into marijuana, and, and I smoked it. I lost total concept of time and place. And like, hey, uh, you were like Snoop. <laughs> yeah, I I liked it, but I didn't because I didn't. You know, I lost concept of time. I don't like right, that. I don't right. like to be the, out, the, of, the, out of control. The lack of control. The but, lack you know, I did it for her, of course. Sense. But uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, just to see your wife and your mother-in-law high. That's weird. And these are strict Baptist women, you know. That's, it was I, a funny thing. 
I, I think it's weird with the mother-in-law. Yeah, to that's yeah. But, but she was a yeah, different yeah. generation, you know. Well, and, she had rheumatoid arthritis. She still does, and and it really helped relieve it. And, and we were getting okay. the stuff for Darcy, and Darcy doesn't want to sit there and smoke alone. Mm -hmm. So I actually we got a little glass pipe, and we used that for a while. I made one out of tin foil, and 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 we did learn how to roll in high school. So I roll. It was so bizarre. <laughs> and I have to explain to my kids, I said, listen, we're doing this for your mother. This is not something that I want you to be doing. Right. Doing <laughs> you know, for recreational, right. Yeah. And they understood. They understood. My, you know, my kids are, are they're not dummies. Um, yeah. And then, so they got it. They understood. But uh, it, it, it was, it was a bizarre thing. Not a situation I'd ever think I was going to be in. Right. No. Right. Just like you, sissy, you didn't think you'd be, you know, the, based on the way you were raised, did you, you, you said it. I didn't think no. I'd be at the place trying to get my daughter some weed. No. <laughs> Flashing my ID, I'm here to buy weed. Yep. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, listen, we're going to try and keep these kids on, on the right path. Um, mm -hmm. So they can get through life and, and do all the things they want to do. I thought this was a great topic today. Um, thank you guys again for coming to hear us here at Jigsaw Parenting. I am Samitra Single here in Atlanta. And I'm Stephen Bax here in Miami. And, and I'm Cindy Van Vark from the Netherlands. And we'll see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>